Hi guys, Tom Shepherd here. A uh, little disclaimer, you're going to hear me say the word tone a lot today and that's because we're going to be looking at shape and tone. We're going to be forgetting about colour and just breaking our subject down into light and shade and keeping it that simple. A little thing I'd like to mention is I really want you to step away from feeling like you've got to do a perfect representation of your subject. What we're after here is a certain level of accuracy, so simple but accurate shapes. Um, but not feeling like we've got to kind of religiously stick to our subject. So I want you to kind of loosen up and be a bit freer. I'm just going to get stuck in, so here we go. Okay, so when we're working with just black and white, just tone, I'm blurring my eyes, looking for the simplest shapes possible, and I'm asking myself what tone they are. And at least to start with, I want to keep those tones as simple as I can. So when we're working with black and white, we've got black for our, our extreme darks. We've got white for our extreme lights. That's fairly easy to understand. Where people tend to go a little bit kind of off piste is when we get into these mid-tones, which in this case are the greys. <clears throat> and at least initially, if we keep those mid-tones to as few as possible, makes the whole job a lot easier. We've kind of got a mid-tone on the background, which is a light mid-tone, and we might say there's kind of a dark mid-tone. And so obviously as the painting progresses, we're going to end up with lots of little in-between tones, but if I can keep it as simple as possible to start with, it makes the whole thing a lot easier. So I'm just going to dive in there with a bit of drawing first. I've got a nice wash of kind of light mid-tone grey and I'm just looking for simple shapes and this is just one way to start a painting is with a bit of drawing with the brush first so <clears throat> probably going to start with the hardest object or the biggest object in this case and I'm kind of setting my boundaries so this is going to be the top and if I say the bottom's about there it leaves me enough room to get in the other objects and then I can start to split that up so the the main bowl of the jug is kind of a third. So if I split distance in this distance into thirds very roughly, something like that. Yeah, so about there. And then I split the remaining distance in half. That kind of gives me the, the top shape. And then if I split that in half again, we kind of get to there. So I'm just giving myself little markers and setting my parameters for the painting. It stops everything getting a bit too big. And then I'm going to dive in, do a little bit of drawing with the brush, and then we're going to get stuck into tone. So, obviously going to do it by eye. The first easy to understand shape is this kind of this kind of bowl shape here. And I find it easier to start with drawing with, even with a circle, drawing with a series of straight lines. For me, it's just a lot easier. I can kind of just go from there. So coming in here. And what I'm after is no detail, but I'm after simple and accurate shapes. So that brings us up to there. Working with a series of straight lines, even for the curves. And then I can refine it all later, it's just to get the ball rolling. I need to make sure, everything, make sure everything's fairly central, so kind of looking for that central line. And in some ways, people kind of want to jump to a finished painting quite quickly, but the better I can make these foundations, actually the, the quicker the, the rest of the painting is going to be. So taking the time to get this, this kind of drawing right <clears throat> makes the rest of the painting a lot easier. And I don't always start by drawing, but bring that down a bit, get into that shape there. We can get into these shapes up there. And that for me is kind of, that's plenty. Can refine those shapes later and then we're looking for this, this shape here. And quite often when you're, um, when you're painting something like this, looking for the negative shape is a really handy tool. So rather than focusing on the positive shape of the handle and trying to get that exactly right. If I just look for the negative shape between the main part of the jug and the handle, it makes judging this shape a lot easier. So if I get the negative shape right, the, the positive shape kind of sorts itself out. 
And now, I kind of, for me, I've done the hardest bit. Maybe this bit's the hardest bit. But using little markers, so the top of that spout comes to about there. How far out is it? I'd say it's roughly by eye, it's kind of there. And then I've got my parameters again to work within. So we're going to come down here. And you could go back in and beef this drawing up a bit, make it a bit sharper, but I'm just going to dive in with tone and I can sharpen the drawing as I paint and refine it a bit more. Yeah, it's a bit kind of clunky as it is, but we'll get it looking better. And now I can go into the tangerines in here. Start to get those shapes in. Let's get a few markers in. So, got that kind of line popping in there. And then it's little markers, like so the top of the little, the little cup is roughly in line with that. And again, the, what's the overall shape? So I can get into the, the ellipse and everything like that later. Initially, I just want that. The kind of the dominant shape first. Almost getting into too much detail there. If I blur my eyes and go back to basics, let's get that in. There we go. <clears throat> and I think it's good practice learning to draw with the brush. Some people don't feel comfortable with it. But when you're working with just tone, you, you're not having to think about too much at once. We're just focusing on shape. We're not having to worry about colour mixing too much. And obviously there's lots of things that need kind of adjusting and changing, but it's just to get this get this ball rolling, something like that. Just eventually want to go a bit bigger with that one actually. You could use this exact same process with oil painting. I'm starting fairly thin and watered down. And it's the same way of thinking even with um, watercolour, it's just a different process to the painting. So that's basically a very loose drawing to get things started. I think just before I dive in with the big brush and start looking for tone, I just I want to sharpen up the drawing a little bit and make a few tiny adjustments and then I'm free to dive in and start actually painting. So I'm just sharpening up some aspects of the drawing and maybe starting to add a little bit of detail here and there. Nothing, or well not detail, but just a bit more information to help me work out what's going on. There's aspects of it I'm not happy with and I want to sort those out before I go any further. But you can see there's no detail, it's just very simple shapes. And then we're going to get into asking ourselves, like that's too big really, we're going to get into asking ourselves what tone these shapes are. It's no problem that I've made it too big, I'm just going to trim it all down. That's better. Yeah, much better. I'll worry about the ellipse later. Cool. So that's kind of the first stage and then we're going to dive straight in with a bit of tone. So I think for me getting the, the extreme tones down as quick as possible is the easiest thing. So let's look at getting some darks in. There's room to go a bit darker but basically if I get my extreme darks in and I'm just blurring my eyes, where are the darks? It's kind of the whole background but there's a bit of um, there's a little bit of tonal variation in the background, so by using the paint in a certain way, <coughs> we're kind of getting natural kind of tonal variation in the background. And I can now use this. I can use this lovely dark colour in the background to start refining the positive shape of the actual items themselves. So I'm using the negative shape of the background to really sharpen up the positive shape of the objects. And I don't have to worry about colour, so we can just worry about tone and it makes the whole process a lot easier. And it, there's no right or wrong, especially with acrylics, but I think starting with the biggest shapes first is definitely makes the whole job a lot easier. And in some ways the background is the biggest shape. So I'm kind of starting there and using it to refine those objects. Bring it in there. And then all of this can be a bit looser. We can start to 
be a little more loose up here. And we know that acrylics look a little bit crude when they're thin. I don't need to worry too much about how the paint actually looks. It's just getting those basic tones down. And let's just get that lovely dark in there. So that's given me my dark. The base coat has given me my light tone. I'm going to pop on a couple of little lights just to help move things along. There's not a huge amount of light on here, but let's just pick pick a bright light and I'm just going to get it on there in a really simple way. So now I've got what three tones on there, a dark, a light, one in between tone. And just before I go any further, I'm going to start looking for that other dark half tone, which was the equivalent of that kind of patch there. It might not be exactly that tone, but it's kind of a dark, dark half tone. And so I'm blowing my eyes and looking for that slightly darker tone. So it's kind of in there. Pop it in there. And what I'm doing is constantly blowing my eyes. I'm almost trying to forget about what it is I'm painting, which sounds odd, but and I'm just trying to look at it in terms of light and shade. And quite often, if you just paint the light and shade, the objects slowly begin to appear. So that same tone is in here. I'm actually going to knock out some of the light so that I can put it back in later. We're going to get lots of different variations of tone as the painting develops. So I'm not too worried about losing certain aspects of my underdrawing, as long as I can see what's going on still. It's a bit more shadow there. And then once I've done this, then we go back in and we start to break it up into smaller tones. But the trick is not to jump around too much with lots of different tones. We kind of, I want to keep this underlying pattern of light and shade. And that'll make more sense when I get into that. So in here, there's not much light. The paint's a little bit creamier now. It'll be the same in, in both um, acrylic and oil. Get that paint a bit creamier. And let's just get a bit of texture down here. And then we're going to pop. There's like a lovely shadow on the, uh, on the tangerine there. So if I start going any further into smaller shapes, we'd, I'd kind of be taking it into the next stage. So one last thing I want to do is a few slightly darker shapes kind of knocking around in here. So we're getting, getting to small shapes now, but I don't want to go too small too soon. But we're not far off. Yeah, a bit darker in there. Deal with the handle later. And a little bit darker in there. But any smaller than that at this stage, and I'm starting to get caught up in detail. So that's kind of the drawing in our bass tones. Right guys, that's a great place to take a break uh, and have a cup of tea. So I've stuck the kettle on and I'm going to have a quick chat to you about brushes. It's a bit of a minefield out there, but actually it's pretty straightforward. Don't get bogged down in the ins and outs of the brushes and sizes and all of that sort of thing. I'm no expert, but this is kind of what I've learned to date. So I'm going to start off with the kind of nylon synthetic haired brushes, this sort of thing, and the flat ones, so they're a bit smoother. And these guys are great for putting on the paint really nice and smooth and flat. Um, they come in a range of shapes from your rounds to your filberts to your brights to your, your short squares, but they all basically do the same thing. They put the paint on nice and flat and they're great for blocking in. Um, loads of other brushes to choose from, but basically I keep it simple. And the other brushes that I use a lot of are these kind of slightly rougher hog hair ones. Um, I don't know if they're actually hog hair or if they're synthetic ones, but basically they're these rough, scruff, <laughs> rough, scruff, scruffier brushes. <laughs> and they're great for your kind of scumbling, firstly, your kind of dry brushwork, that sort of thing. But where they really come into their own for me is when it comes to putting on that light thick paint, like really pasting it on there. And what you'll find is whilst these synthetic brushes put the paint on fairly flat, these hog hair brushes or these bristle brushes, they tend to put the paint on a lot thicker. They hold more of that paint. And when it comes to putting it on, it stays thick and you can see the brush strokes. And that's it. I tend to keep my brushes really simple. 
I don't find it needs to be any more complicated than that. And so before, I was working on the whole painting at once, so it didn't stay in any one area for too long. Now I'm kind of going to home in on individual areas. And because I've got my extremes of tone, my dark and my extreme light, it's going to make judging these smaller in-between tones a lot easier. And now we're getting to a stage where we're going to get smaller kind of nuances and changes of tone. But as long as I keep my underlying pattern of light and shade, I should be fine. So ever so slightly lighter tone there. And now I can start to really refine the shapes of these different objects. And I'm now I'm looking for what I'll start to do on the palette is instead of just working with one big area, I'll start to have a few different tones in a little string on the palette. And then in that way, I can kind of dip in and out the various tones and we start to create form by just varying the tone ever so slightly. So little variations of tone. And again I don't I don't want to get caught in one area for too long but I'm kind of homing in on little patches getting them to a certain point being a bit more careful to get the right tone so I'm going back into big shapes and looking for smaller shapes and smaller variations of tone within them. So I'm still looking at the subject in terms of just light and shade, i.e. black and white, but looking for those smaller kind of variations of tone. And all the time I've got this to relate it to, and actually to get this tangerine really going, I'm just going to put on the lovely bright light and that's going to help me work out the in-between tones a little better. I can see how light I can get a go, get away with going elsewhere then. So we're going to go a touch lighter there, but not quite as light as that big light blob I've just put on. So it gives me that um, gives me that reference point to refer back to. And it might be that I destroy it in the process of kind of bringing this area to a finish, but all the time it's just a reference for what's to come. So basically I'm kind of sculpting the, the form of the object now and I'm in danger of going a bit too far so I'm going to move away from it in a sec and then come back to it possibly just one last time. What I can also do is use that tone now to start getting on creamier paint in other areas. So back here, So if I'm blurring my eyes it's a touch lighter. more that sort of tone. So you can see we're getting lots of little variations of tone but the overall pattern of light and shade is actually staying the same as my very initial underpainting so I don't want to destroy that. So we're going to go, really good question to ask yourself and it sounds really obvious but is how am I seeing something? And usually it's down to tone so how am I seeing this orange? I'm seeing this orange because it's got a really bright light there but I'm also seeing it because what's behind it in this area is lighter than that particular edge of the orange. So that gives me my tonal reference. And then judging this tone that's behind the orange, it's not quite as bright as that light there, but it's lighter than the majority of the orange. And that gives me then the correct tone for that area. So it doesn't have to be literally perfect relative to the photo, but it does have to be fairly accurate relative to what else is going on in your painting. And then I can start to get a bit more texture in there. And we can start to look for smaller variations of tone in areas. So now I'm working with what's called, you might call kind of in-between tones. Again, it sounds really obvious, but I've got an area of shadow here, an area of light here, and I'm just mixing a tone that is somewhere in between the two. And I'm kind of stepping down into that area just to soften the edge a little bit bit softer. So I'm not so much blending the paint as I am blending <coughs> using tone. So I'm allowing the eye and the mind to blend rather than using the paint to blend. So something like that. And then we're going to take that same approach and start breaking up the rest of the subject. So I think I'm just going to dive into the 
the biggest shape. That was kind of, I eased myself in here. That wasn't too, wasn't too scary. I've worked out a lot of the tones that are gonna work within the painting as a whole. So now I can come in here and we can start to break this up. I don't mind destroying that big white that I put on. It, again, it was just a reference. And while I've got that tone on the brush, I might as well just pop it in in a few places. And I wanna keep it really, really simple and quite brushy. So again, cause I'm working with tone and not having to worry about color mixing, I can kind of focus on the different ways I'm using the brush as well. And this paint is slightly creamier, so it's going on in a nice opaque way. And I'm just looking for nice, simple, nice, simple shapes. Not everything's going to make sense straight away, but if I just, I know if I just keep painting the light and the shade as I see it, eventually it will begin to look like our subject and it's kind of, it's trusting the process of painting tonally. I might have to go back into the background and just refine shapes and that's fine. There's smaller variations of tone coming in here, smaller variation of tone in there. And this object is quite complex. I'm looking to simplify as much as I can, but it might be that I have to get it to a certain level and then I have to come back one last time to really finish it off. It needs a bit of attention up here. And what I'm effectively doing is setting up for putting on the lights later. So it's kind of, even though I'm using acrylic, it's exactly the same approach as there would be in oils. And because I tend, I tend to use acrylics like they're oil paint, so I build up to putting the light on. But you don't have to do that. Just As long as we stay aware of tone, it doesn't really matter what tone we're using at any one stage, as long as we're aware of what tone it is. Pop in some lights here. So I'm building up to those lights. And there's more to do with this object. It's probably the most complex one, so I will be coming back to it. But as a kind of a stage further, that's kind of there. We're just missing a few slightly darker tones that aren't quite as dark as the background but they're a little bit darker than anything else that's on there. So now we're moving into maybe the, don't know exactly, but maybe there's kind of six or seven different tones, but the underlying pattern of light and shade has not changed from my initial sketch. Yeah, so you can see that's starting to work. And then how am I seeing it? Well, there's a slightly darker tone in there, which is giving me that edge. There's a slightly darker tone in here, which is giving me that edge. So how am I seeing some of the edges? It's a good question to ask. So now we can see the difference between varying the tone a little bit more versus these ones where they're a little bit more crude and also the difference of getting this slightly creamier paint on as well. So basically I'm gonna take that exact same approach on the other objects, nip into the background, and get that a bit more refined and cut away the shapes and then it's finishing touches. So I'm hoping to keep this fairly quick and keep it fairly loose, fairly simple. So that's kind of served its purpose, that light there. I'm actually just gonna destroy it completely because I don't really need it anymore. And it's that sort of tone for the light of the tangerine. Yeah, it's that sort of tone. I'm trying to keep my tones fairly similar across the whole painting. Something like that. And then we've got a slightly darker tone on the back edge. It's the same tone. So you hear me saying the word tone a lot, which is no surprise. Yeah, there we go. We've got a hard line between light and shadow there, but what we do have within that shadow shape, far too light, within that shadow shape there's a slightly lighter tone. I'm not quite getting it. That's too light. Yeah, something like that in that area, a bit lighter. So we're getting to those really soft kind of changes in tone. And what I'm building up towards is putting the light back in. So there's a light patch there. And then within that light patch, there's the bright highlight. 
So that doesn't look hugely organised. You can see within my palette, I've got a string of a string of different tones. I kind of popping that on there. I'm looking to simplify my subject all the time, so I'm not looking to paint it exactly as it is in the photo. And then I'm going back to this question: How am I seeing something? So the majority of this orange is lighter than the background, but just on the shadow side of the orange, there's a little tone behind it that's ever so slightly lighter and that's just going to throw it out at us. And then while I'm at it there's a little tone on the underside of the jug which is a little bit darker than the background so now I've seen it I'm just going to pop it in there and again that's going to start bringing out the object. So we're looking for that, that question how am I seeing something? Is it darker than what's behind it or is it lighter than what's behind it? And ideally it's going to be one side is darker, one side is lighter than what's behind it. So we get start to get interesting tone going on. Okay, so just going to move into that, finish off the background, and then we're going to come in and look for kind of finishing touches and highlights. We've got this, well, I know it's a lemon, but you can't quite tell in black and white, but it's this, it's this shape behind here. And it's lighter than the dark side of the of the little mug, of the little cup, but it's not as light as this grey here, so that gives me my tone. Again, I'm coming back to that question, how am I seeing it? How am I seeing it tonally? Kind of tonally like that, simple shape, and then within that shape, there's a smaller shape that's slightly lighter. So almost forgetting it's a lemon and saying, well, it's a certain shape that's a certain tone. Then within that tone, there's a smaller shape that's a slightly different tone. And we're kind of I'm analysing the subject in that sort of a way. Now into the goblet, I've got all my tones mixed on the palette already. So even if they dry up, I know I've got my tones there to, to remix if I need to. The paint's lovely and creamy for those these kind of half tones and the, the thicker, thicker lights. So I'm just gonna dive in there. And I know that I'm coming back in to put on some um, some finishing touches on all of these. So I'm not I'm not looking to get it to a perfect finish quite yet. I'm just taking it a stage further, like that. And we come into here. There's a whole load of different tones going on, but I'm going to keep it really simple. I can make it more complex later. And we come down into here. Keep it really simple too light, mix a bit more black in it, we go a bit darker, there we go. So you can see it slowly starts to appear. I think one of the big things is not wanting to jump to a really finished painting too quickly. We just stick with this process of light and shade, light and shade, and eventually our objects will start to appear. Just have to have a bit of patience. Little variations of tone. Yeah, so that needs more work to really come out at us, but it's gone a stage further. And if we want to break it down into stages, that was basically stage three. We'd done a drawing, we kind of blocked in our basic tones. Then I've refined those tones and looked for smaller variations. And now we're basically at the stage of going in and finishing areas off, and I'd like to make this fairly quick. So there's this kind of lighter tones hitting in here. Just and this thicker, lighter paint will start to bring the subject to life. I don't want to do it everywhere and I don't want the same level of light everywhere. But it's these little flicks right at the end that start to make the subject come to life. If you do them too early, you don't really know where they need to go. That makes sense. So as we do it now, because of the way I've set the painting up, I'm pretty certain where I need everything to go. And this looks very light, but tonally it's not quite as light as our brightest highlight, because if I blur my eyes, there is lots of light hitting in the foreground, but it's not as light as the highlights on the object themselves. So all the time I'm relating, relating my tone to other parts of my painting. We should start to get some of the, the folds. 
but I don't want to overdo this area. I'm not looking to paint every single area to the same level of finish. I'm looking for our attention to remain here, but with a bit of interest elsewhere. And so I can start to just pop these lights in around here. Simplify, simplify if you can. Keep blurring your eyes. Make everything as simple as possible. There's plenty of time to fiddle around later if we need to. Not that I want to, but it's kind of, you can see we're starting to bring in the lights and it's those thicker, kind of creamier lights that are bringing the subject to life. But before I do any more of that, I just want to go in and get the background working just a little bit better. It doesn't necessarily need to be neatened up, but we could do with a bit more paint on there. We could do with some darker tones. And then I really am ready to dive into the main objects and get them finished. And that's kind of it. So we've got a nice base tone for the background. I want to work in some really rich darks. Need to make sure there's no white in the brush because that will make they won't be as dark as I want them to be then. So look at the really rich darks. I don't need to neatly cover up everything that I've already done. I'm looking for kind of patches of dark within my existing background and looking to then refine the shapes of my foreground object. So I'm back to painting kind of negative shapes here. And in doing so, I can really refine the positive shapes of my subjects. Yeah, so I don't need to... I quite like that mixture of thin brushy paint with slightly, slightly thicker, more opaque paint. So I don't need to perfectly cover everything up. And up here, let's just get a bit of, bit of texture in there. I'm getting rid of some of the visual noise so that the, the objects themselves kind of come out at us a bit more, but I don't need to get rid of it all. And then that's an important shape in there that I need to get fairly accurate. And most people, I think it's fairly well known, is that actually quite often painting the negative shape in between the objects, most people find it a lot easier than painting the positive shape of the object itself. And actually in reality it's kind of in and out of both. A bit of positive painting and a bit of negative painting. And so in that way we kind of slowly carve the object out from the background. There we go. And then I quite like the, it being a little bit lighter up here, but I do want some darker patches within it. So a slightly lighter touch of the brush and we do a bit of scumbling. And let's just go a little bit darker in here. So we're getting a pattern of light and shade even within the background, i.e. that there's kind of a darker corner here and there's a bit of light kind of hitting there. And what this variation of tone in the background also allows me to do is it allows me to pop in some slightly darker tones within the jug that are going to kind of pop out at us. So some kind of gone a bit too thick with the mark there. So I need to go back to my negative shape and just kind of trim that, that down a little bit. There we go, just refining that shape. Something like that. And there's a highlight to go on that shape as well, so we'll get that on in a sec. I don't want to accidentally leave a halo around something, so I'm going to take that into there. Kind of integrate it into the rest of the painting. Okay, cool. So we're basically on to... I quite like the background. I might go into it one last time. Hopefully not. I don't think I need to. It's really kind of going into the objects and finishing them off. And not every object needs to be brought to the same level of finish. Like I quite like the foreground being a bit chunkier. I quite like this orange that's fairly crude, but it does what it's meant to do tonally. This is becoming um, a little more finished, but I want to get into the, the main jug and finish it off. And I don't want to spend too long in there. I'm looking to finish it off fairly quickly. The basics are all there, it just needs some slightly thicker paint and a bit more variation of tone and some highlights in places. So I'm going to a smaller brush and I want to get in some lovely chunky bright lights over the top of what I've already done. Something like that. And it's these lovely bright lights right at the end that start to bring the subject to life. 
And even within the highlights, there's still variations of tone. Not every highlight has the same brightness to it. What's lovely, though, working black, black and white, is I don't have to think about the colour of the highlights. I'm just thinking about the tone of these highlights. This, there's a bit of reflected light on the other side, so little touches right at the end. Again, I couldn't do these too early because I didn't know where they needed to go. Little reflected lights here and there. What I'm not looking to do is make a perfect representation of the photo. I'm after something that's kind of resembles the photo, but doesn't have to be a perfect copy of it. And it means that I don't have to get bogged down in detail then. So we go a little bit thicker. Some lovely little highlights kind of dancing around in there. And yeah, some of the shapes are not quite as refined as they could be, but for the for the nature of this demo, I think they're doing what they need to do and I'm fairly happy with them. So we're going to go thicker paint in some of the highlights, letting the, the brush do a lot of the work. And again, oils and acrylics, the thicker I can get those highlights, the brighter they're going to look because they're going to reflect more light. They're also not going to die as they, or they're not going to sink in and go dull as they dry, which can happen. Little variations of tone, so not all the whites or not all the lights, the same level of light. Really subtle variations of tone here, so just in there, too light. Needs to go a little bit lighter here, but not too light. Something like that. Needs to go a little bit lighter in here, but not too light. There's a tiny touch lighter in one place, and then we've kind of got it. So you can see I'm homing in on individual areas to finish them off, but at the same time, I'm not getting I'm not getting bogged down in those areas. Yeah, and it's starting to work. So there's a lovely little low light just catching the edge of there. Although, it, again, it still looks a little bit messy, but I have got this string of kind of shadow working towards light, this kind of string of tone on my palette. And you could go on and on working like this. You can, I'm putting smaller shapes within already existing bigger shapes. And you could carry on doing smaller and smaller shapes. And now I can start to refine this, this shape in here. I'm building up towards putting on some highlights. Just need a couple of areas need a bit more attention. Yeah, a bit more variation of tone in there. A bit more variation of tone in there. So even at this late stage I'm still thinking tonally how light or dark is something. So there's lovely little highlights kind of here and here, little shapes right at the end but I don't want to make them too bright and I need a few dark accents to sharpen things up. So as well as putting in small highlights in places I'm also going to be putting in the odd dark accent and those dark accents start start to give us just a bit more definition in the odd place. I don't necessarily need definition on every single edge, but they are useful. Not so much up there, just a little dark accent in here. You're kind of punching it up a bit, stretching the tones, making some of the lights a bit lighter, making some of the shadows a bit stronger. We start to just get a bit more form to the objects then. Then I've got room to go in with my highlight right at the end, nice and thick. And so kind of setting an area up, and what I'm building towards is then putting on the lovely bright thick highlights right at the end. So it's kind of those lovely thick marks right at the end. And in this case it's just pure white, so that's nice and easy. If it was in colour we'd be looking, we'd having to be, we would have to think about what colour those highlights would be in order to really make the most of them. But now we're just little touches of light and you can see that's, that object has really popped out at us. And I'm making the viewer kind of look here. This is our focal point. So my brightest lights are here and they're not so bright down here. So kind of trying to control where we get the viewer to look. Little finishing lights in here, just smaller shapes within existing larger shapes, not getting bogged down in detail. 
And I'm just going to say, take the same approach over here. I think I want to lighten this orange ever so slightly in this area. And I can't blend because the paint's dry, but what I'm doing is, I mentioned it earlier, I'm, I'm mixing subtle variations of tone and putting them next to each other so that the eye kind of blends them by itself. Little touch there. I don't want to do anything with the the, um, the lemon in the background. And then I just want to bring in these lovely bright highlights onto the cup. So we've got a really lovely bright light in there, nice and thick. And then we've got not such a bright light. It looks bright, but it's nowhere near as bright as the light I've just put on. It's just running along the rim there and just catching there. And you can see as soon as we start to get those lights on, our subject starts to appear. And like I said earlier, it's kind of trusting that process of just painting the light and the shade. If you paint your light and shade, your subject does eventually appear. And the more you do it, the more you learn to trust this process. So lovely lights just bouncing in there. We could do with more subtle kind of variations and with a bit more time, we might look for some of these more subtle variations, but as an exercise in tone, we're kind of getting there. There's a lovely bright light there and just some more subtle variations of tone in the odd place. And then that's, for me, that's done to a degree that's, that's fine for this, for this painting. Kind of little tone there. There's more variations of tone happening in there, but it's, you can see that's starting to appear. And then there's just one or two kind of things like that going on. Can we just push the back rim just a touch lighter? It's not so much in the photo, but it just feels like it wants that inside edge to be a touch lighter. And I just want that light on there to go just a touch lighter. So right at the end, where can I push things just a little bit lighter? So we're nearly there. It's kind of just one more look around everything to see if there's anything I need to do. So we're talking about dark accents. It needed a little dark accent in there. So I'm still looking at the subject in terms of shape. It's just that these shapes are much smaller. So here's a little triangle and it's a dark triangle and it's a dark triangle with an already within an already existing larger shape. So still thinking tonally and still thinking in terms of shape. And then I think just right at the end, now I've got my really great big whacking lights on there. I want to go just a stage lighter in the odd place just to lift it out a bit more. Almost a bit too light there. And some sharper marks as well. So just some nice sharp marks right at the end of the painting just to bring it to life. Don't want to overdo it. In there. No, I just want to go. It's almost the last brush stroke. Just going to pop it in a little bit darker behind there. And a little bit darker again, and we pretty much got it, I think. And I think that's it. Started with big, simple shapes and focusing on getting a shape accurate to start with. Then we go in with our basic simple tones and then we start to look for smaller variations of tone as we model the form. And then right at the end, we start to look for these really small highlights and dark accents. And that's basically it. Okay guys, so I'm, I'm sharing this with you in the hope that it will help you out. I'm just trying to give you an insight into what I do. Um, so I really want to grow this channel. I really want to be able to share more with you. But in order to do that, I'd, I really need you to kind of share these videos with other people and um, and kind of get the word out there and spread it about a bit. So if you like what I've been doing, please do give me a thumbs up. It's a massive help. I really, really want to hear from you, like comment, um, good or bad, really doesn't matter. I need some feedback. I'd love to see what you're painting out there based on what I've done. That's going to be great. I'm happy to comment and help out if I can. Um, and also subscribe to the channel. That's a big one because um, there's going to be loads more of these videos. And again, it's really going to help me if you do. So until next time, happy painting.